All right, this is going to be a really quick introduction to square roots and negatives. Um, I will go much more into it on Thursday, okay? Uh, but I want to do a pretty quick intro to at least be able to get you through these types of problems. Mm -hmm. Okay? So real quick, pretty simple here. To solve for x, you'd square root both sides. What are your answers? x equals 4. x equals what? 4. Positive or negative? Positive or negative? 4, right? If you square root both sides, square root of 16, positive or negative 4. All right, everyone knows that. Okay? Now, if I had this, x squared equals negative 9, as of right now, we haven't really talked about that too much. Okay? Because if you think about all the numbers that you know, is anything times itself equal to a negative 9? No, 3 times 3 gives you positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 also gives you positive 9. Okay? There is nothing times itself that equals a negative 9. Okay? So, this is a problem that came up um, as they were working, discovering all the different things about math. Okay? This is the problem that came up and they wanted to have a solution to it. You will get a lot more information about the imaginary unit I on Thursday. But for right now, I'm just going to show you how I is used to help you find square roots of negative numbers. Okay? Let me go back to something like this. X squared equals 20. When you square root both sides, X equals positive or negative, you kind of break down 20 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Because the square root of 4 is a perfect square that goes into 20. So your final answer would be plus or minus 2 radical 5, right? That's what we did yesterday. Okay? The thing that you will do is very similar when you do this. But what we are doing is we are assigning the square root of a negative 1. We are assigning that value the imaginary unit or complex unit I. I is what we will use to represent the square root of a negative one. And this is how we are going to do square roots of negative numbers. And again, I'm going to go into a lot of detail about I on Thursday and Friday when we work a lot with it, okay? But for right now, I'm just going to use it to help you show how to do square roots of negatives. So now, knowing that, okay, when you have x squared equals negative 9, and you decide to square root both sides, so then x equals a positive or negative square root of negative 9, you can think of that as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. You can break negative 9 into a negative 1 times a positive 9, just like we broke 20 into 4 times 5. We're breaking negative 9 into negative 1 and positive 9. What is the square root of negative 1? I. What is the square root of 9? 3. Okay? So we are just left with the answers, positive or negative, 3i. So the square root of negative 9 would be a positive or negative 3i. Anytime you do a square root of a negative number, you will have an i in your answer. Okay? Go with me on this for today. Again, we're going to get into the uses and everything else about i later in the week. But I'm just here to help you with square roots of negatives for right now. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Let's say I had x squared plus 12 equals 0. How would I solve this? Subtract 12 from both sides. So x squared equals negative 12. Then what? Square root both sides. Square root both sides. So x equals positive or negative square root of negative 12. Think of the square root of negative 12 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 12. So 
square root of 12 can be broken down into square root of 4 and square root of 3. Square root of 4 times square root of 3. Square root of 4 is a perfect square. So this part becomes i. This is 2. And that's radical 3. So I have three parts to it. I have an i. i times 2 times radical 3. Because the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 3 just stays square root of 3. So my final answer, positive or negative, 2i radical 3. Any questions on that? Can I do one more with the fraction? Sure, yeah. I think you should be. So go 3x squared. Plus 8 equals 0. Okay, what do we do? Subtract eight. eight. Divide by three. That doesn't really divide, so I'm just going to leave it as negative eight thirds. Then we um, square, root by square root, square root, right? Yeah. Now, when you square root a when you square root a fraction, you square root the top and the bottom, right? So really, this is like the square root of negative 8 over the square root of 3. There's a lot of ways to go about doing this. Who wants to state how they would go about doing it? Creighton? Multiply the bottom by the radical. Okay. He would go ahead and just multiply the top and the bottom right now by radical 3. That is definitely one way to do it. Okay. And why is he doing that? To get rid of the radical and the bottom. To get rid of the radical and the bottom. Okay. So if you want to do that right now, you go ahead. What is another option that you could do first before multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of 3? Um, Set so, uh, radical negative 8 equals to like radical negative 1 times radical 8. So you could simplify the square root of negative 8 first, and then do this. Both ways are going to be fine. Did you have a different one? That was going to be that one too? Okay, yep. Awesome. So, great said this one, so I'm going to stick with this one for now, but it really wouldn't matter. So this then equals the square root of negative 24 over 3. Right? Okay. Keep going. The square root of negative 24 is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 24. But the square root of 24 has some perfect squares, has a perfect square that goes into it. Four and six. Square root of 4, square root of 6. So the square root of negative 1 is? I. I. The square root of 4 is? 2. 2. The square root of 6 is just? Six. Square root of 6. Right? So what am I going to end up with? Uh, positive or negative 2, two I, I radical six. 6. Nice. Any questions on that? So if you see a square root of negative, basically everything's just the same except your answer is going to have an i in it, right? Okay, there's really not much different. Again, I'm going to go into a lot about what i is and why we have it and the different things that we'll do with it. Okay? It is applicable in a couple different situations in college, but not a lot. 
Uh, but you do need to know it because they do show up on ACT. You guys saw that on that ACT practice that we did a couple weeks ago. We had a question using an I, all right? So they do show up on those. Um, and I'll mention a few careers that, that can use that information as well. So um, hopefully this should help you get started and finish what we need to for tomorrow. Yesterday, if you were here, you probably got 1 through 12 pretty much done. You didn't need to use I at all in 1 through 12. You probably do the rest of the way out. Okay? So what I want you to do from now until 8.54, so you got about 25 minutes, okay? I want you to finish 1 through 20 and feel good about that. Tomorrow's quiz is going to have some of these problems on it and then some factoring ones. I will review factoring with you the very last 10 minutes of class today.